willing to be uh, radio personalities with you. They can tell you how to get in touch with them, but I need you guys to sort of tell them farewell, and then we'll let Rich and Suzanne and ask everybody to come back whenever you decide you want to bring your people on from California. So I thought I'd check in and let you know that. So you guys talk it over. Everybody's live on the air, including Rich and Kevin and Scott. Yeah. Well, what we can do is at a later date, I can get together uh, with Kevin and with Scott, and we can talk a little bit of stuff offline. Yeah. yeah, I'm having a great time listening, Stan. I only counted 380 hats last time I was there. I don't know. Yeah, and I know it. I know. It. Isn't that <laughs> terrible? I know. I know. I know. But, it was good talking to you, Stan. Anyhow, it's good to talk to you guys. I'm so glad that you chimed in. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. I, I'm yeah, really enjoying kidding? this, and I can't wait to hear more episodes with you, Stan. Oh, well, thanks. Okay, yeah, that'd be fun. We'll do it. All righty. For sure. Yeah, you know, Scott, there's many, 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 many stories. <laughs> That's the truth. Yeah, yeah. There's, I'm sure there's still going to be more. I don't even know, but. Uh, it, yeah, all of a sudden one will go, oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. Oh, yeah. It is just so much fun, and I'm glad you guys get to hear Stan. Reading it, I hope you're going to love the book, but hearing him tell the stories is great. So I'm so happy for this. Very good. Thank no, thank you. you, Alice. Thank you for being here. Well, yeah, I'm going to uh, still be listening, but I'm going to so, bow out here for a little bit. Okay. What's the book? All right. Bye-bye. Bye. What, what's, it's the book, you know, Music, Mayhem, and the Mouse. So and, and we, it's, it's finished, and now we're proofreading, and, and uh, Nathan Ike is taking a look and reorganizing some of it, so... Yeah, it'll be ready to be published any time now. So now it's now the trick will be finding the publisher. Well, that's no so, that's 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 an and easy the, bit. the gist of it is the gist of it is uh, you know I've always felt that Hunter S. Thompson kind of mm-hmm. kind of guides me, and, and I think all throughout the book I have him in mind. You know, mm-hmm. and he says that life is. It should not be a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in a pretty and well-preserved body, but rather mm-hmm. to skid in broadside in a cloud of smoke, thoroughly used up, totally worn out, and proudly proclaim, wow, what a ride. Mm. So that's, that's my idol, Hunter S. Thompson, and that's kind of what the whole book keeps reiterating and, and mutating in, in, in different ways in different chapters, but it's pretty much all about that. You so, know? so do you really, I mean, seriously, I mean, I'm asking a serious question. Do you, do you really feel as if Hunter S. Thomas, Thomas has showed up um, and given you guidance? No, not a, really. No, no. okay. No, no, I, just no, no, I just enjoy, enjoy, I enjoy his writing. Okay. You know, That's who our grandson is named after. Yeah. Oh, is it, I didn't is know it Hunter? Yeah. Yeah, Hunter's named after Hunter S. Thompson. Oh, oh yes, yeah, right. <laughs> I thought we had a grandson named Thompson. No, we don't. Yeah. No, Hunter. Yeah, Hunter, our artist grandson. Josh is the oldest boy. By the way, a, a wonderful great artist. artist. Yeah, really great artist. So he's liable to be our ticket out. I, I don't know many people that read his work, and I really enjoy his work too. So it's kind of a kind yeah. of an interesting thing. The Curse of Lano is a book I have out at the moment. So, um, all right, we're almost done. We're down to the final bit. So you should really, um, you should really, you know, both of you. I'd like to hear Tara and Stan talk together about something, because um, I've seen the two of you together. You're bonded. You're right and left to one another. You're the yin and the yang. And, um, yeah, it's, you know, I'd like to hear the two of you talk together about something. I'm going to push my mute button, and I'm going to listen to you talk about a story that you two like. Oh. you talking about us? Yeah. Yeah. Friend? What story do you yeah. like about us? What is the story Close or no like close. Share? <laughs> you know what? You know, our, our honeymoon was pretty wonderful. What was it? <laughs> what was our honeymoon? Oh. I mean, just as, uh, in general, just going to New Orleans. Oh. Yeah, I went down to New Orleans. I love to play New Orleans, and 
week, so I couldn't be moving out of the way. I got a chance to move out for a little bit. Yep. And we went on the paddle boat and where we went up the river for a while on the Delta Queen and came back. It was uh it was it was really magical. It really was. So anyhow, we've already told them more than we know. <laughs> so <laughs> So, you know but this has really been uh, really fun for us. You know, we appreciate having the opportunity to have the fun with you guys. And, and uh, you know what, for me, Suzanne, thank you. Yes. Go, go to that. Well, I was going to say for me, as far as, as with Stan working at Disney, so he would work there all day. Then he'd have to check the bands at night because that's when they would be playing. So he'd come home, get me. We'd go back to Disneyland. And, you know, I mean, that was like I had date night every single night. I'm there at Disneyland. We're listening to music. It's beautiful. I mean, you know, it was, it was just magic. It really was. It still is. Yeah, that, that wine, woman, and song turned into bingo, buttermilk, and the old lady. <laughs> well, you know, hey, you get what you get. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, no, it's been great. It's good. We haven't. You've talked for a really long time. Next time we're gonna we're gonna take and put in a few more guests to pop in with their questions and their comments because once people find out that you're willing to talk to them and they have an opportunity to share their Disney stories, that's what makes the show so exciting is um, how you share a very personal story and you don't share it in a way that you're. You're not at all embarrassed or anything else. Everything's out in the open at this point, so it's really lovely. And you're right. This is a great story. It really is, and you really have been a great conversation. I can talk for hours. Not everybody enjoys it that much, but I think that I have the art of conversation down, and I think that's one of my great strengths. I mean, I enjoy being a great Mm -hmm. psychic, but I also enjoy just the conversation and um, I can talk more than I think just about anybody, except for my son. He can out-talk me. Oh, <laughs> oh we noticed great. Rich was here. Oh, we need to talk about we need to talk about the ACO Radio Club with Rich and let him mm-hmm. talk for a minute. And okay. Stan and Tara, I want to uh, make sure we mention your new website so we can start letting all your friends know that you have a web presence, and maybe yeah, they yeah. will help us uh, build if they would like to be a part of your your websites and your web presence and then hopefully we're going to get you guys on youtube again because you're both so good looking and you know the (laughs) the youtube is free and social media is great and all our friends uh, work in a lot of different genres and social media so join all of us look for all of our names in our acl radio club on facebook and instagram and twitter and if you're an entrepreneur please get on linkedin.com and uh, here at TJ Mars ET Radio, we've been doing this eight years, and we love to archive stories for the ACE Folklife Society, and that is part of our ACE, ACO, and ACO is for American Communications Online. And I'm really excited about working with Stan and Tara. They know so many people, and Suzanne and Rich. So we've got about six minutes, so each person should take two minutes to introduce their website and then how we're all going to work together with Stan Freeze Entertainment Productions Company whenever we get through all this COVID-19. So I'm going to mute and then let everybody, richflynn.com, I know, but acoradio.club. But uh, Tara, I need yours and Stan yep. separate, and then you're together okay, we'll those production. To you. Okay. Yeah, okay. we'll give those to you. You know, yeah. Right. And, so, and, and, yeah, we'll figure it out and give them to you for sure. Right. So you have yeah. terrafreeze terra dot com and you have standfreeze dot com. You have um, standfreeze entertainment dot com, uh-huh. and then you also have music mayhem and the mouse dot com. <laughs> yeah. So you know we've got hey we can cover we cover it all. Okay, and you have a really beautiful speaking voice, Tara. You have great clarity. I feel your heart when you talk. And, you know, if you were to tell me the one thing that you really love about the work you're doing today, serving the community, what is the thing that you really, really love about your work today? I mean, I know you love Stan, and I know you love your family, and I know you love your grandchildren. What do you love about your work today? Oh, my work. Well, because I do 
several things. I mean, my my art that where I'm working with is actually this is interesting. I think some people find it interesting. I'm working with Stan's ex-wife Trish. And she is a writer. She's written several novels, but she also has children's um, poetry books. And I am doing the artwork for the poetry books, and it's the two grandmas that are doing it together. And um, I love it. I love working with her, and I love doing the doing my art. Same thing with the hats. I love it. I love the hats. So when somebody else, I can see that they love it, then that makes me feel good. You know, I'm glad that that somebody else enjoys what I'm doing. Wow. Wow. What a great, inspiring story. Um, So what you just said is that you just love being, you just love being the grandma, whether it's telling the story or um, dressing the family or um, just whatever it takes. It's inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. I am a woman. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, you know, and the thing is, I have, I'm a, I'm a real feminist. Uh, I, I love showcasing women musicians at Disney. Uh, I kind of feel that it's one of my missions to, to showcase some of the wonderful woman musicians and entertainers that are out there. Which we're going to have uh, on future shows. People like, yeah, we're going to have them on future shows. Uh, okay. With the Cindy Shea and the Mariachi Divas, and oh, Rick yeah. Wilkes, uh, yeah, Adelaide, you know, uh, Thomasina. We've got uh-huh. just uh, all of these great girl band leaders. I've always <laughs> tried to make girls band leaders every time that I have an opportunity to because they are such great band leaders. And oftentimes, you know, people don't think of women as being strong enough or good enough musicians to be actually a leader of a high-powered professional band. But, uh, wow. but there are a lot of them, and so I love showcasing them. I love letting the world know how great some of these girls are because they really are. So anyhow, so that's kind of my deal. You know, that's if I had cool. a deal, that, <laughs> that, that would probably be it, you know. I can't say enough about some of these girls. In fact, I put together two all-girl bands. Uh, one mm-hmm. of them was called Miss Behaven, <laughs> and the other one was um, the uh, Suffragettes. <laughs> and so these girls, these are six and seven piece bands of nothing but talented women that uh, play well and sing well. And it's just a thrill for me to showcase these girls, you know. And because, like I say, I've been through my my mom was such a, a strong feminine, feminine and, uh, you know, five foot two captain of the college basketball team. And, you know, uh, and my ex wife is a talented, talented writer, Tara, with mm-hmm. everything she does. I've just, I've been surrounded my whole life with, with really talented women that I take note of for sure. And, uh, and so it's, it's fun for me to showcase that, to showcase these. These uh, women at Disney. So, anyhow, I'll continue doing it in my own little way, and have some fun with it. You know, did you play? Did you? So there. What do you there. think about that? I think that's fabulous. I love it. And Rich, are you there on the phone? From the girls. Yes, I am. Okay. I think Devin. Give us a yeah. plug. Two minute there plug. Oh. A two-minute plug. Well, first I'd like to say that the book about music mayhem in the mouth is going to be a hit. I know it's going to be a hit because just think of all the millions of people who have gone through the park and all the people who have worked there as you're talking about going through the harbor gate. You know, just think of all the thousands and thousands of employees that have gone through the harbor gate. I mean, that just brings up memories. So you're talking and then everybody is absorbed in their own memories of the experience of Disney. So that's just really going to be a hit. So I'm really, oh, really looking thanks, looking forward Rich. to seeing that. And yeah, uh, thanks. thanks, TJ. Yeah, thanks, TJ, for putting us on. And oh, again, sure. I'm Rich. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> TJ, we'll, we'll save this for the next time, so we'll give people a look forward to next time, is that TJ's audience, a lot of them are UFO enthusiasts, so stand next time Whoa. you have to tell us about your UFO I'll story. I'll tell them my UFO story when I was six years old. 
Yeah. Oh, wow. 